God help me. I love it so, Piper Robin said to herself whenever she imagined her favorite Cambodian takeout on the corner of 44th and Prospect in Brooklyn. Every Friday evening, rain or shine, she picked up an order of car stew with pig trotters and whole eggs, caramelized palm sugar, and fish sauce. And every Friday night at 7 p.m., she and her evil utopia-obsessed father, Edison Godfellow, streamed flicks and ate car while sitting on a tacky flower-print couch in the living room of a grimy apartment with a sputtering ceiling light and one window overlooking the Manhattan skyline. Here you go, thirteen dollars and thirty-five cents, said Miss Song a jovial woman in her fifties who wore a red headscarf and a sauce-splattered white apron. She pushed the bags of car stew across the counter to Piper. You healthy and happy, Miss Song? Oh, yes. No reason not to be. Didn't you say relatives were flying in from Phnom Penh? Yes, Piper, they are here now, but I think, you know, New York is too big for them. They are talking about a move. To where? I would not want to lose you. They say Seattle, Ventura. I'm not sure. They are scientists, engineers, and they want to change the world, she said and laughed. The world always needs changing. You think they can make it work? I'd like to see that. They're young. Think they know everything. Who doesn't? Not to worry. I won't be going away soon. So lots more car for you she said, and laughed again. Okay, then. Love you, Miss Song, Piper said with a smile and slapped down a wrinkled twenty-dollar bill. And love ye your mango yellow hair, Piper Robin. See you on Broadway. Besides Yummy Carr and her friend Miss Song, Piper also totally enjoyed New York in 2038 C.E., acting and looking like one of her favorite old sci-fi films from decades ago. Giant Latino, African, and Asiatic faces consuming products and pitching vacations in nine languages above Brooklyn, streets brimming with all manner of oddly glowing creatures and jostling humanoids, while various drones, glowing clouds, and aerial machines whirred overhead. It was the best of times, and the worst of times. Where had she heard that line before? Ah, yes, Dickens. Regardless, another question. Was New York in autumn not the perfect place for her to forget her true identity? To lose herself, and unwind as someone she never really knew. A mango-haired, young American girl fresh out of San Bernardino, and seeking an acting job on Broadway. Any job. She could sing, dance, do cartwheels, soar, and swoop like Peter Pan. Whatever it took. Her co-workers affectionately called her the Brooklyn Putts, and said she appeared too pixie-like, 5'1", and barely 14 years old. That fact alone might hamper her dreams, but she didn't care. There truly was no business like show business. She'd even been auditioning for parts in The Lion King and Book of Mormon, both having run in NYC for over 30 years. And besides, she could always look older any time she wished. Though I don't wish to, at least not unless it matters. The role of a naive mango pixie from California suited Piper Robin for now. A self-imposed lesson in humility, coupled with a need for a rush of new impressions. She'd sectioned off her old memories of lives and times long ago with a simple spoken spell in Galician. De soquios novos, recordos sexan os primeros. Let only new memories come first. Thus allowing her most recent to compete for attention. In this way, she could more easily lose herself on the bigger stage of New York without, for example, feeling compelled to compare sidewalk fruit stands in Brooklyn to similar stands in Constantinople around 1206 CE. I'll make a brand new start of it in old New York.